This video starts with demonstrating the pin holder mechanism. Here I'm pushing the button from the back to bring the holder mechanism out to the front where I can insert the pin. I can insert either a pin or a socket, a socket in this case. Then the pin holder recedes to put the pin in the correct position for crimping. Then I just need to grab a wire which has been stripped back about three millimeters and then butt it up flush with the plastic before squeezing the ratcheting handle all the way closed. There's a satisfying click at the end to indicate a complete crimp. Performing a handheld crimp at this magnification is a little jiggly so for the next crimp I'll try putting one part of the handle in a vise. But hopefully we can see that this crimp came out beautifully. It already looks better than crimps made with my other half dozen crimpers. And it was a whole lot easier to do it. Here's a more stabilized view of a crimp. I'm inserting the socket with a pair of tweezers so that you can get a better look at it. Next I'll slide in a stripped wire with red insulation in this case and then we'll run through the full stroke of the ratcheting process slowly enough to see exactly what's going on. Even in the vise there's a little jiggling but it's a lot better than hand holding it. And it's another great crimp. Although hand holding the wire I run into that same jiggling problem. If you look closely you can see that the insulation crimp has compressed the red insulation without cutting it. It's going to be no problem at all to get used to this kind of speed and performance. Note the two sets of wings still sticking out. One set prevents the connector from going too far into the housing while the other one prevents the connector from coming back out of the housing. Next up I'm just going to show insertion of the pins into a typical housing, one of the many types of housings available for this line of connectors. This particular housing only has one latching lever on top, where some of them have a latching lever on both sides. It's a little tricky to perform this action under a microscope, but in normal use it's very easy to slide these connectors together. These sockets and, and pins can be removed using a special tool that goes in from the front and compresses the retention wings so they don't catch on the retention shoulders of the plastic while you pull the pin out. I don't actually have one of these tools yet or I would demonstrate it. Next up we'll take some measurements. I'm just going to measure these crimps. So the insulation 1.51 millimeters on the yellow one here and on the red one it's 1.39 so the red one's quite a bit thinner than the yellow but as we saw in the video it's still clamped right onto the the insulation there now let's measure the actual crimp distance 0.93 millimeters and that's um, once you've verified that these crimps are good you can determine their the, how good they are just by measuring this dimension so you can see here it's 0.93 millimeters and let's take a look at the red one it's 0.9 millimeters so they're close now um, just to confirm where they are at the insulation 1.73 millimeters on the yellow and on the red 1.61 so it does a good job of both of these diameters and I'm going to um, actually cut through here and uh, do a cross section to see just how good. This is a cross section of the crimp after I cut through with a little grinding disc. 
I also buffed the ends with some fine grit sandpaper. Looks like I would need a much better polishing system to be able to distinguish the individual strands of wire. In this view, it just looks like all the copper strands and the crimp are just one solid mass of copper. You can see why they called crimping cold welding. You're not going to get a much better electrical or mechanical connection than that. Next up, some pull tests. I have a connector in the vise here, and connected to it is a single connector. And we're just going to measure the pull force with this meter over here. And I can, I've got it connected to a vise which I can pull. And we can see that it's at 45, 55 grams. Sixty-five. And it's coming out. So it's about sixty-five grams to pull out on a single connector. Okay, for this test. I put a connector right inside, but there, I've taped the latch so that it's open and won't obstruct the connector from coming out. And then I have my usual force gauge here, and I can just crank this up 30 grams, 70, 85, 95. And really just stretching out this knot at the moment until it gets tighter. So it seems to have pulled out at 95 grams. I'm going to see if I can pull the crimp right out of the connector. And no, I couldn't. It came out of the vise. Okay, I've removed the gloves. I've taken off the rubber um, jaws and just clamped the connector directly into the vise. Hopefully that will get us okay yet force. another attempt. Let's see if we can crank this up. Okay that pulled out at just over five kilos I think and it actually broke the wire. It didn't pull out of the crimp. So that's not too surprising. The crimp is really solid. All in all, a very nice connector system.